even though this may be a short meditation. Try to make up for the lack of time with the quality of your focus and the determination of your focus. You're going to stay right here. Nothing thoughts of goodwill. Goodwill is a wish for true happiness. And considered in the light of karma means several things. One is that you're wishing for other people to know the causes for true happiness, in other words, skillful actions, and be willing and able to act on them. And you're wishing the same thing for yourself. So it's not just an idle thought, a pleasant pastime. It's reminding you of what your motivation is and what your task is. You're looking for happiness that doesn't harm anybody. If you've harmed people in the past, spread lots of goodwill to them and lots of goodwill to yourself. Goodwill to them to remind yourself that you don't want to re repeat that mistake. Goodwill to yourself so you don't get tied up in remorse. But at the same time, you do recognize the fact that you made mistakes and they were harmful. So you've got to get your act together. That's another meaning of having goodwill for yourself. Buddha talks of it as kind of restraint. We don't usually think of it as restraint. We think of it as a boundless attitude, and it is boundless. It's for everybody. But what it means in practice is you've got to restrain your thoughts, your words, your deeds. Anything that will harm anybody, you've got to say no. But it also talks about this as a form of mindfulness. You keep this in mind all the time as you go through the day. It's a determination that you make up your mind that you really do want to carry through with this. So it's a call to action. Years back I wrote a piece on how metta does not mean love or loving kindness, it means goodwill. I made the mistake of sending it to a magazine that was basically Tibetan. And their attitude basically was, well, what right does a Theravadan have to say what metta means? So they build the article as, for those of you who can't manage love for everybody, try some goodwill. Which is pretty insulting. As the Buddha said, love, bema, is partial. When you really love somebody, then anybody mistreats that person, you're going to hate the person who mistreats the person you love. Or if there's somebody you hate and there's somebody who loves that person, you're not going to like that person either. So love is unreliable. Goodwill, however, is reliable. That's why the Buddha made the distinction. You wish for happiness and you realize it has to come from causes. It requires restraint. It requires mindfulness and determination. So think of goodwill as a call for action, and not just a sweet sentiment. That way you begin to understand how it can be a powerful practice. There's the story of a John Cow, who, when he was a young man, never had any thought of ordaining. Then he went off on a business trip to buy and sell things, came back found that his wife had been cheating on him. His first impulse was to kill the guy who had been cheating with his wife. And he realized, okay, that's not a good thing to do. So he ordained. And then John Munn assigned him goodwill in a very elaborate and extended way. as an hour-long practice every morning, hour-long practice every night, to remind himself that you want to make sure you don't give in to those kind of impulses ever again. And he was able to use that as his motivation for a life of genuine practice. So don't think of it simply as something sweet to get out of the way. It's a call to action, skillful action. When you understand it in that way, you can see how important it is.